Hi class, today we're going to be discussing China after Mao. So up until this point, we have been discussing Mao Zedong and his pretty gripping and, and terrible rule of China and how over 50 million people died under his um, regime. So today we're going to answer the question, how did China evolve after Mao Zedong's death? Let's do a little review first. Mao Zedong was the communist ruler of China from 1945 to 1976. We talked about the Great Leap Forward and the Cultural Revolution. They were two of Mao's programs that he imposed on China. The Great Leap Forward was a terrible failure. While the revolution was a success, it meant a lot of tragedy for the Chinese people. The Great Leap Forward had the goals of improving China's industry and farming. We talked about propaganda posters. Instead, it led to shoddy, that means bad, industry and mass starvation, killing tens of millions of people. The Cultural Revolution had the goal of strictly imposing Mao's communist beliefs on the Chinese people. The Little Red Book was required reading for all Chinese. The only thoughts and opinions Chinese people were permitted to have were Mao's thoughts and opinions. We talked about all this in the last couple of days. Uh, here you see another propaganda poster, and you remember that the Red Guard were students, and they were called the Red Guard because red is the color of communism. The Cultural Revolution was successful for Mao, and traditional Chinese culture was mostly destroyed. The Chinese people were under his control. Let's see if you can find something funny about this picture. Of course, those who disagreed with Mao were openly or openly criticized Mao were beaten and tortured, imprisoned, or killed by Mao's thugs, the Red Guard. We talked about the students. During his rule, Mao was responsible for the murders or the starvation of over 40 million of his own people. Mao was extremely brutal, ruthless, and absolutely uncaring of the fate of Chinese citizens. Mao was perhaps the deadliest ruler in all of human history. The full extent of his crimes against humanity would not be known until well after his death in 1976. Even though Mao had distanced himself from the USSR, that's the Soviet Union formerly, or what Russia formerly was, and began relations with the United States, China remained a nation strictly controlled by communism. In 1976, Mao died and was succeeded by far more moderate communist leaders. By moderate, we mean not as extreme. All right, in 1978, two years after Mao's death, this guy, Deng Xiaoping, took over as ruler of China. He kept communism in place, but began new economic reforms. So we have discussed that communism is not only a government type, but it's an economic type. So Deng made economic reforms, and he called these reforms the Four Modernizations. They involved using capitalist ideas to help improve the economy. This would have never been okay under Mao. He hated the capitalists and everything they believed in. Goal one was to increase agriculture. Deng ended the collective farms. We called them communes. So he ended communes and allowed farmers to rent land and to grow crops for a profit. Here you see what happened as a result. From 1977 to 1997, you see a massive increase in all of these different uh, farming outputs. As a result of farmers having an incentive to work hard, food production increased by 50%. Goal two was industry, allowed private businesses. So instead of having the government control and run factories, he let foreign companies come in who actually knew how to run factories. 
As a result, incomes rise. Chinese buy consumer goods like TVs and appliances. Goal number three, defense. China modernized their military and bought more nuclear weapons. Which we've talked about nuclear weapons in the past and how they're not really truly legal. But nuclear weapons are kind of, it's, it's an odd thing, but they're a necessity of governments for fear's sake. But at the same time, they're not really legal with the UN. Goal number four, technology. China invested in education, built a space program, and welcomed foreign technological ideas. These economics ref economic reforms led to a boom in the overall Chinese economy in 2010. China passed Japan and became the second biggest economy in the world. Now, this is a little askew, and the reason for that is that while China has economic reforms, their human rights are not really that great. So while they have the second biggest economy in the world, part of that is because they don't pay their people even anything close to minimum wage here in the United States so they can produce more things for cheaper and make more of a profit. So here you see an example of all of China's growth in GDP, GDP per capita, foreign reserves, all those things. Deng Xiaoping's reforms had unintended consequences for Chinese society. So you notice that in this picture, you see ancient China followed by modernization of the Western world, like McDonald's. Things that Deng Xiaoping or um, uh, Mao Zedong would roll over in his grave if he saw. Chinese emphasis on education and the influx of Western companies led many Chinese to learn more about democracy, another unintended result of bringing in capitalist ideas. They began to all of a sudden question their own lack of personal freedoms. They were saying, wait a minute. We've got all these foreign companies coming in and talking to us about foreign ideas. What's up with democracy? Like, we kind of like that. There's a lot of freedom there. And the Chinese government reacted. Thousands of students demanded democracy from their government, and they protested in Beijing's Tiananmen Square in 1989. Thousands of Chinese students demanded democracy from their government, and protested in Beijing's Tiananmen Square in 1989. Sounds a lot like the last slide. Student leader Wang Dan in Tiananmen Square calling for a citywide march. How do you think the Chinese government reacted to this demonstration? Chinese soldiers and tanks attacked the crowd, killing hundreds of protesters. The Chinese government arrested and executed leaders of the protest. This right here is a very famous picture from Tiananmen Square. It kind of stands for the individual's rights being suppressed by a giant military um, that's trying to keep control of the people. Here's more pictures from Tiananmen Square. Um, you can actually go to this, thegreatfirewallofchina.org, and type in any website and see what it is that China still restricts on its people. The Communist Party increased control over its citizens by representing pro-democracy demands, censoring the media and information, and restricting freedom of speech. So this is a picture from the TV show The Simpsons. I want you to tell me what makes this picture funny. Think about it. It says Tiananmen Square. On this site in 1989, nothing happened. If you don't get it, it's, the, it's a parody. It's a sarcastic way of talking about how the government restricts actual history. In 1997, Great Britain returned to Hong Kong, returned Hong Kong to China after ruling the colony for over 155 years. In, it's the same thing. Under British and Chinese control, Hong Kong served as one of the world's major commercials and financial centers. Under Brit... Gosh, why... <laughs> That's weird. 
China has one of the fastest growing economies in the world. Others include Brazil, India, and Russia. The BRIC. Huh. But China has a low, I just said this, a low wage workforce, a large gap between rich and poor, few personal freedoms, and human rights violations. So here are some reports that you can look at that, and some videos that will talk about the stunning economic growth in China. Okay, that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, please, please complete.